Of all the things Shorb has done, why? What do you care? It'd be the same uh -oh. as if a cat created a profile. That's a good example. Who cares? Even a homeless guy. If a homeless guy, if it doesn't matter. Get the straw. Get that straw. I don't think I've ever seen anybody eat or drink like that, but it's all good as he now thinks he's a draw for 10 million against his apparent best friend, Jake Paul. Having to clickbait with Golden Hours Chris D'Elia, of all people, for a few extra thousand views is sad enough, but he only turns up at the very end, of course. Even though Brendan doesn't train and Jake is 14 years younger. If it's BJJ, sure, but the Pauls only take boxing matches they think they can win. Either way, speculation is pointless as the Paul brothers are after Tyson, Tate, people with bigger fan bases than Shorb, and his super fans are more concerned with deciphering why the man does anything he does. And you also get this narrative, he's the best, he's the greatest of all time. He's not. He never was. We were sold on that. Yeah. But when you go, it's very black and white, you go through his record, he's not. Even down to again, whatever you would call this behavior. A mystery for the ages, though many would tune in to see Shaw Blues. As hated as the Poor Brothers are, youth and KO ability, if it's boxing, is definitely in their favor. Tyson Paul wise, the age difference is gross, but if it's not a soft exhibition match, a Tyson KO is arguably what most want to see. Either way, with how poorly Shaw was treated when on Impulsive, I doubt he'll have anything to do with the event. You do YouTube? As he's got business to attend to anyway. Shaw's podcast employers, Cast Media, finally have officially filed for bankruptcy 13th of March 2024, owing millions to podcast creators, even 456,000 is owed to Theo Vaughn, but why is Brendan not on the list? Because as we've covered before, Brendan took a terrible payout deal of 1.6 million based in shares in their new company, Podcast One, opening at 4.3 9 USD and still barely above $2. It fell the moment Theo Von publicly dragged the company and Colin Thompson for ripping him off and still hasn't recovered. It's no surprise though, as even as simple as something like straws, Shorb can't be honest about. There's something very feminine about using a straw. No. I don't use them, right? Because I'm no punk. You do. Well, you, no, you, you would for, an, for this. You would for this. Uh, you wouldn't take the top off if they handed uh, you. If I, here, I'd take the top off. A, 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 a yeah. Iced coffee. Yeah, because I know punk bit. So having the level-headedness to not rush into a new deal with a company that's screwing you over, as Theo did, was a bridge too far. And we find out that the sponsors in his new truck show, Toontown, aren't actually sponsors of the show. Well, at least Kibitech, who replied to a fan saying they do not sponsor Shorb's show, he just uses our parts on his TRX. Fueling further speculation as to how his multiple podcasts, employees, studios, and other costs are working out, as sponsor deal contracts would then be lower based on their 2023 stats, their ad sales and ticket sales as we're seeing with their lowly attended live shows, under 100 tickets last show, the next show was 10 days out at 30 tickets sold, and is now cancelled entirely. So, uh... So we're gonna reschedule Austin. Yeah, we're gonna reschedule Austin. April, Austin. May, so May, June. We'll do yeah, May, sorry June, for maybe. sorry fake, guys. Bring your baby to the live show. I'll bring my baby to the live show. Like the day it's born. Let alone cancelling his entire comedy tour with no return in sight. It's a real mystery as to how it's all staying afloat, leading to baseless speculation like this to spread across the internet. Though it wouldn't be a surprise considering Tom Segura, Chris D'Elia, Andrew Schultz, and many others that grew up rich. Considering Brian Callan takes home 30k a month, according to Mark Harley, Brendan's ex-assistant, they've either taken major pay cuts, are staying afloat on savings, or someone is financing the endeavor, as there's no way they're making enough to cover every expense. Sure, subreddit of 150,000 anti-fans that watch his every move for comedy reasons, just not reasons intended, they're now taking a lot more notice of his wife's public Instagram with her going viral on X this week, and due to her selling designer bags and clothes. People are speculating if allegedly they're fake designer items. Even if they're real, she's charging $1,500 for a $700 bag. Ah, the typical LA influencer. It's rough until you remember the funeral fit post from Shorb and you realize this is normal for their social media output and fits the stereotype of LA like a glove. Even Shorb's fight prediction record, you think he'd be better than the average man at picking who will win, but he takes a commentary role recently and of course the Shorb effect continues on where almost every time he picks someone, they lose. But it's alright because plot twist, someone in George Bush's circle is repping Thick Boy merch. How about we, we rename the Vulcan the Fathership? The Fathership's so genius, dude. That's a great idea. Boom. The f well, these two events alone prove the marketing genius. Stepmothership, fathership. Yeah, let's just Jack Rogan's club idea and rename the Vulcan to something with ship in it too. I'm sure they appreciate that for helping their own brand recognition. 
Retired UFC fighter Sean McCorkle is still going at Brendan, airing out his entire life story on X, which you've probably all heard at this point. And Shorb's old Adam Sandler story he has told differently every time he tells it, of course comes back to haunt you. You're the uh, tough guy that does comedy, right? And I was like, holy... F you're that funny guy that kicks ass. I didn't know what to say. Uh, you're the ass kicker that tells jokes, right? You're the ass. He knows who you are. I was like, Hilariously, he had to tell this to Nick Swartzen, who was actually a close friend of Adam Sandler's. He said the same for meeting Floyd Mayweather to Tom Segura, and just completely forgot that it's very similar to what Sandler apparently said. Oh, you that white boy that works too much. That's what he said? Yeah. Yeah, because that's what Floyd Mayweather would say. It's so unbelievable that it's painful to listen to. He also has another retired UFC fighter, Luke Rockhold, after him, showing Shorb how donuts are done and talking in Shorbanese in the description. Shorb responded, Mmm, kinda. We need more power on that bad boy. Side note, those girls thought you were David Blaine. Ah, you got him with that one. The internet's still not over his 40 reps claim, which the NFL all-time record is 49 reps. And he's back to saying that lie, but is now telling the truth, at least based on the actual number from the stats kept on college players. College, I did 21, 22. Two good, summers ago, I did 225, 42 times. <laughs> it, reps? Yeah. Show me the evidence. That's crazy. Crazy. If anybody knew that was BS, it was strong man and ex-actor for the mountain. After Beyonce. Uh, last summer I did 40, and his face changed. He goes, you beat me. I go. Guessed. It would have been so obviously not true to him, the 6'9 and over 200 kilos were not preparing for a fight. I mean, look at the two of them next to each other. And of course, once called out, Shorb is too tired to prove I'll film it. I mean, you go. We'll do it now. I went, he got competitive. Yeah, I went, I'm not doing that now. I go, dude, I just got done deadlifting and pulling a truck. I'm not going to do it now. He goes, and then he goes, all right, tomorrow morning. But Brendan, of course, did more reps than one of the biggest guys on the planet. And it was last summer, and conveniently not on camera, for anyone to witness as someone who was on camera constantly. The mental gymnastics to make that work. It's definitely at a point of strange parasocial watching, but that's what the internet does with everything these days. Especially someone who can't stop blundering. Otherwise there'd be nothing for people to clip up, and he'd fall into the same place as Carlos Mencia or Dane Cook who can no longer pull the numbers they once did. Brendan may never learn. It's literally Groundhog Day, but for being the greatest unintentionally funny comedian of all time. There's nothing else like it in comedy history, and it's why many comedians approach the topic with the infatuation level of watching the end of the world. Believe it or not, the pre-2014 Brendan was actually liked, by myself included. He was funny and very self-aware. Then he got smashed in the mush too many times, and here we are. I really enjoyed the fighter and the kid until 2018. It's sad to see that many of his anti-fans were genuine fans to begin with, but it's almost impossible to imagine Shaw becoming self-aware, not dunking on himself for a change with obvious alleged lies, owning the jokes people make of him, and improving at the craft he picked. But until then... This is you! And then I have to get stern like, Thor? Game, games of Throne? Thorn? Right? Not happening. Mm. Prime Tyson would have ripped me apart. You think you could beat up Mike Tyson? In a street fight? In a yeah. street fight, maybe. Yes. He's, 